Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com. You can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And I wanted to talk right now a little bit about UiPath Studio variables and using the input box. This is a, a simple Hello World example, but it picks up from the original Hello World tutorial that I did for UiPath, and it adds in, I don't know, a little bit of pizzazz, namely throwing in some variables and using an input box as well. So I'm going to improve on my Hello World UI path process by creating a new project of type process. I'm going to call it Hello World Variables because I'm going to put some variables into this Hello World process. So before I started off, when I did my first Hello World, I started off by simply using a message box under the systems options here and the different activities. And I simply displayed that message box and said hello world inside of it. Now what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to take some input from the user using an input dialog box, hold input, specifically the person's name, and then display that in a message box and say hello world Cameron. So to do that I'm going to open the main workflow. So I click on that link there. Optionally you can hit project, double click on main.xaml, it achieves the same thing. And I'm going to take that input dialog box and drop it right on top of the plus for drop activity here. And the title of the dialog box will be, tell us your name. And that all has to go in double quotes. Notice I almost forgot that. And then I'll say, what's your name in the label? And I can actually run this just so you can see what that's going to look like when it runs. You see, it just does this little, what's your name? And there's the title there, tell us your name. And it doesn't do anything because I haven't hooked up any data or variables to pass information from one window to the next. But I want to take whatever somebody types into that input dialog box and, and hold it as a variable. And that's where the variables tab comes in over here. You click on variables, create variable. And the variable I want to store when somebody types in their username is username. It's going to be of type string. That all looks very good to me. I come back over here, click on the input dialog box and say, you know, when that dialog box runs and somebody types in their name, the result should get stored as this variable username. And I actually just type in the letter U and you can see the variable username pops up right away. So I click Control S to save that. You can also click on the Save button there as well, just to commit some of those changes. And then after I've got that information from the user, the next thing I want to do is just display Hello World Cameron or Hello World Fred. And for that, I'm going to have a message box. I'll just let, drop that into the sequence here. So you can see now the input dialog box is going to call in the message box. In here, we'll say Hello World plus username plus a couple of exclamation marks. And now we have a, a little bit more involved sequence. We're using the input dialog box to take input from the user. We've got a message dialog box to display the information pulled in from the input dialog box. And right now I should have a, a nice little sequence that actually takes a user's name and displays it. So I'm gonna come over here, make sure you click save. I'm gonna click the run button here. You can do it with control F5. It doesn't work too great on a screencast. It now says, what is your name? I'm going to type in my name, which is Cameron. And then a window comes up and says, hello world, Cameron. And there you go. That's a simple hello world process, but using variables. And there you go. That's how easy it is to incorporate input dialog boxes and temporary variables in your UiPath Studio processes and applications. So if you like that, uh, head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots more tutorials over there on UiPath. Um, also all sorts of stuff on enterprise software development. If you want to keep up with my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And I'd say, you know, maybe you should even subscribe on YouTube.